Well, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. Today, God has given me a word um, that I think that a lot of us really need to know. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus loves me. This I know. And you say, how do you know that Jesus loves you? Well, before I begin, Father God, I thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to come before the saints, Lord God. To come before those that are on social media, Lord God. That they will not only be blessed by the word, Lord, Amen. but they will come to an understanding and gain wisdom to know whether or not you really love them. It is in your name, God, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So how do I know that Jesus loves me? Well, first off, Jesus shows all of us his love by inviting us to his eternal home. And he welcomes us. Jesus forgives us with open arms when we what? repent. He waits patiently for us to show up with a surrendered heart and willingness to change. He never gives up on us, even though sometimes we give up on him. Jesus told us about the prodigal son. And for those of you who know about it, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But for those of you, if you will go to your Bibles and it's in Luke 15, Luke chapter 15, 11. And I'm just going to read a couple of verses of these because this is one of the most, uh, one of one of the good examples of Jesus' love, which has to do with the son. Um, and guess what? This, when I read over it, I never did think about uh, the age, but it says, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he did. He gave it to him. And what did the son do? He went on out and did what he wanted to with it. And um, the next thing you know, he is um, eating right along with the swines. You know, he's he's come to this point in his life where he's, wow, I have blown it. But he figures out that, you know what, I can still go back home. And I can still at least be a servant, if nothing else. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but as you know in the story, when he gets home, his father's happy to see him. And he embraces him with love. How do we know that? Well, because his father tells um, his servants to go and bring the, the uh, fattest calf. He puts a ring on his son's finger, puts a robe on him. And oh my goodness, he realizes that no matter what he has done, his father still loves him. How many of us know that no matter what we have done, our Father God, He still loves us. And I can say that Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus longs for us to invite Him into our hearts and celebrate everlasting life with Him. He has a place prepared for you and for me. He welcomes us home no matter what we've done. He's still standing there with arms open wide. Amen. How do we know this? Well, let me tell you a few things to help you understand how I know that Jesus loves me. And then maybe you will understand how much Jesus loves you. Well, Jesus says, I love you because I care for you. Jesus watches us both day and night. When one of us gets lost, what does he do? He go out and he looks for us. No matter how far we strayed away, he's still willing 
to go out and look for us. And he wants to bring us where? Back home. We're just like the lost sheep on a farm. When they get lost, the good shepherd goes out there and finds it, right? As in the Psalm of David, which is a good example. God didn't create us to be alone. As a matter of fact, he created us to be in fellowship with others. Because uh, loneliness can tend to have you doing things that you would not find yourself typically doing. As I've heard Apostle say, when he talked about and, and taught on loneliness, it made me remember that even though I may feel lonely sometimes, I'm really not. Why? Because God is there. If I don't have a, a, a physical body in front of me, I can commune with God in the spirit. I don't have to have somebody right there with me. In fact, one of the things that people often go through is when they feel either neglected or rejected. Mm -hmm. And why do they feel this way? Well, because somebody may have told them, look, I'm tired of looking at you. I need you to stay home. Don't come back over here. Stay home sometime. Or you don't have to call me all the time. You can call me uh, maybe once or twice out the week. Uh, Apostle has us laughing. He said, now, if I don't hear from you in 48 hours, I'm coming to look for you. <laughs> but sometimes people need that time alone, as I've often heard my my uh, sister over here say sometimes it feels good to be by yourself but even when you're by yourself God says it is still better to be with others because sometimes our minds can drift as they called it the older the elderly people called it idle time is an idle mind you begin to think and do things that are not, what, acceptable. Not, I'm not even talking about society. I'm talking about not acceptable to God. So in your loneliness or in your time that you say you want to yourself, you begin to feel as if you don't need anybody. You don't want to be near nobody. You don't want nobody in your space. But guess what? That's not what God says. Why? Because we need accountability. We need to be accountable for each other. I'm not saying I have to call you every day, but it sure does feel good when I can hear a voice of somebody that I love. Just like I know that Jesus loves me. I can hear his voice when I'm in that quiet place. I can hear him speak to me. And even when I can't hear from friends or families, I know that Jesus loves me because he calms me down and he makes me to feel better. He says, I care for you. I want you to talk to me about what bothers you. Well, the next one is Jesus says, I love you by spending time with you. Same thing. Jesus spent time with the sinners and those who were sick. He ate and he drank with those that no one else would dare come close to. When the world rejects us, we know that we have a good shepherd who loves us. His love brings healing to the brokenhearted and the sick. Guess what? If nobody else wants to spend time with you, Jesus says, I do. Come unto me with your heavy heart. I want your time because I love you. Jesus showed his love through his life by visiting the poor, the widows, and the orphans. Why? Because nobody wanted to be among them. Who wants to be around a widow? Somebody who's not married or they just, their husband or, or the wife just died. And, you know, because then you start hearing about their issues, their problems, whatever. Some people can't take that. But Jesus can Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are willing to hear everything that comes out of our mouths. You are. Your ear is always in tune and listening to us, even when no one else wants to. 
It says Jesus lived his life for a purpose. Did you not know that you are here for a purpose? The purpose isn't about you. If you don't know that, you better ask somebody. It ain't about you. Amen. He says his purpose was to serve everybody. He brought hope to all who would receive him. And he called us to do the same. If Jesus came to bring hope, and it says that he did, then why aren't we doing that? Why aren't we out there taking the hope and the word that we get fed to other people? Why? Because sometimes people are just too scared. They don't want to be out there telling or sharing a word they may feel like somebody might shun them or tell them I don't want to hear that or whatever whatever the case may be God says we are here to serve we are here to serve this isn't about us at all Jesus spent time with his disciples teaching and encouraging them he ate meals with them he fellowshiped with them Amen. and that's what I appreciate about the house of power we see each other Wednesday and Sunday Wednesday night we spend time with each other learning the word Sunday we may spend time eating a meal together that's time being spent and all I can say is thank God for the time some people don't even get that Jesus says I love you by changing your hearts. He can turn a stone heart into a soft blood pumping full of love heart. Some people's heart is so full of stones. <laughs> Why? Because they have not done anything but either one They've been through something traumatic. Okay? They don't know how to love. Maybe most of their lifetime they spent loving the wrong person. That person in turn filled them with lots of hate. They did something to them to the point where they don't want you to get too close. But let God get a hold of your heart. He can change it. Jesus promised his disciples that they would not be alone when he left. He knew that they would miss him. He knew that. He knew that when he left them, they would miss him. And he promised them the comfort of what? The Holy Spirit. So even when we're lonely and we miss Jesus, he promised us the comfort. The, the, the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit when we ask Jesus into our hearts. And when he comes into our hearts, we can't help but to be changed. But we have to allow him to come in. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. And when we pray to our Father in Jesus' name, we can be sure that we are in his presence. We enter the throne room of prayer because of the blood of Jesus. We don't need to confess anything to a priest, a preacher, and nobody else. We can go to the Father and confess whatever it is we have done. Because he says, come unto me. Come unto me. Guess what? Jesus can show us a better way to live. He gives us the tools, the strategies, the discernment, the wisdom to do so. He speaks to our hearts in different ways. You know how? Through music. And I'm a music lover. Mm -hmm. Scriptures, friends, teachings, visions, miracles, and so much more. Hmm. And guess what? He can he changes the way we think and he fills us with the fruit of the spirit. And love is in the fruit of the Spirit. 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So if you have the fruit of the Spirit within you, who can come against you? Well, guess what? We all have sinned. Shame and guilt can sometimes keep us in a pit. But Jesus rose from the dead. He took our sins and he gave us a new life. We are free to live at peace with ourselves and change the way we do things and not go back to those old ways. This is all a part of God's love and how he changes us. Let him do the changing. When you hear the word, let God, ask God to help you receive the word so that you can be changed from the inside. Because once the inside is changed, the outside sure does look different. Jesus came to show us that he desires relationship. So whoever said, I don't have to have nobody in my life. You haven't checked your Bible lately. Okay? <laughs> because Jesus said that he desires a relationship. So if he desires a relationship with us, why would he not want us to desire a relationship with others? And I'm talking to those that believe and that know in God's word that he is all about relationships. He longs for us to receive his unconditional love, which apostles spoke on love before and taught us there's different types of love. There's the erotic love and there's the, um, um, what's Phyllis. that? Phyllis. Phyllis. And then um, there's your Eris. brotherly love, your Eris. Ferris. And then there's the unconditional love. Wow. Agape. Right, which is the agape love. Well, today, as I move on, I'm not going to be here long because I'm almost finished. There's no greater love than the love of Jesus. I don't care who says they love you more. It is not possible. Jesus is the only one that can love us more than anyone else. I heard someone say the other day, now I understand why Jesus says, your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Because we don't have it in us to be like him unless we are willing to surrender fully. And even in our surrendering, we can still fall short. However, it depends on how long you want to stay there. It depends on you if you're willing to have a forgiving heart. It depends on you if you want to move forward and allow God to continue that love inside of you. Three types of love that I want to talk about. First love, the intense love and then we'll talk a little bit more about the unconditional love so the first love this love feels like a fairy tale it's that all consuming what they call puppy love and one that at the time you think will last forever often we experience our first love usually in high school and usually it ends because two people have either grown apart or something trivial has happened and caused them to break up well this love is usually more surface level with more importance place placed on how the relationship might look to others. While it certainly feels like true love at the time, it's not usually the deep, raw love 
that you'll experience later on in life, the heartbreak can feel immense initially, but you usually recover from it quickly. That's the first love. The intense love. That's the second one. This is the second love, and it's usually the one that turns our world upside down. <laughs> he loves you. I know, right? As we fall into this intense love story, the relationship becomes a mirror into our soul. We see all our insecurities, our needs, and our desires staring right back at us. In this relationship, we may experience jealousy, fear, and self-doubt that we've never felt before. The relationship comes with massive highs and dramatic lows. We often try to mold the other half into our perfect partner. And we try to mold ourselves to become theirs. Hmm. This is the love that feels like a roller coaster. And the one that can leave us feeling guarded, distrusting, and hurt. The heartbreak from this relationship can be indescribably painful. But it is also through this heartbreak that we really grow, change, and evolve while finding the inner strength and resilience that we didn't know we had. Hmm. I wonder who's ever been in that place. I know I have. The unconditional love. Hmm. After we've gone through the first love and the intense love, eventually we try and we learn that there is that unconditional love. While this love is a healing love, it cultivates, it cultivates self-love. Then comes the unexpected love. And you're like, wow, this, I'm really loved. No matter what I've done, this person still loves me. The one that comes from nowhere and feels you, feels just completely and utterly right. There are no games. Nobody's playing games in this kind of love. Mm -mm. And when you are with them, you simply feel like you're at home. You embrace all that they are all their imperfections, and all their nonsense. You embrace it. Why? Because you love them for who they are, no matter what. Well, you feel more like yourself with them than you ever have before. And you constantly inspire each other to be the best version of yourself. Okay? When you face an obstacle or a challenge in a relationship, you work together to overcome it. There's not one person going to their bedroom by themselves while the other person is going to the living room to sleep on the sofa. That doesn't happen in unconditional love. The two are able to come back and say, look, I'm sorry. Or whatever the case may be. They are able to come back together and talk it over and find a way to settle things. Because God does not want us to go to bed how? Angry. We are not supposed to go to bed angry. Amen. When we're angry with someone, you're supposed to be able to work that thing out if you can, if it can be worked out. Because anger as we know it, brings about stress, brings about um, anxiety attacks, a whole lot of other health issues, high blood pressure. And when we can't come to a point where we can come together and talk things through, you leave yourself in a place where you feel like you just, you don't know anything. You, you can't even love that person anymore. 
it's hard to come back. So why am I talking about this? Unconditional love. Because there's only one person that can give that to us. And that's Jesus. Now, he's, he puts it there for us to know that, that, it, that the agape love, which is the unconditional love, is the that's supposed to be our example. And this is how I know that Jesus loves me. You want to know how I know that Jesus loves me unconditionally? Because I can remember when my mom would say, I need you to be back in by a certain time. She let me go out on a date. I said, okay, mom, I'll be back. She said, 11 o'clock. I go out on my date. I come back at 1 o'clock. That was God's love covering me because I was being ignorant. I was not following my mother's directions. I was not listening to her. We have to understand that when people give us warnings and if it comes from God and you know that that warning is for you, Jesus loves you enough to send you a message to help save you from any type of hurt, pain, danger, or whatever the case may be. This is how I know that Jesus loves me. He puts different people in my life to give me a message. And one of the messages that I heard, and I've told Apostle before, the most powerful thing, and it has stuck with me all week so far, as it was necessary. Everything that I've been going through, it was necessary. Amen. It brought me to tears when I got home. Because all I could think about was the things that I have done that was the total opposite of what God had asked me to do. We are not ignorant. You've been raised up in a church environment and you have had some point in your life where you had a chance to get a relationship with God. I'm not just talking about going to church for the sake of going to church. I'm talking about a spiritual connection to where you know that Jesus loves you. And where he has kept you along the way. I've never, I have never told anybody that I was perfect. Far from it. But I can say over and over, even in my imperfectness, that Jesus loves me anyhow. And he brings me back home when I'm lost. He says, you don't have to feel that pain of hurt and broken marriages. You don't have to bring that with you. You don't have to repeat the same thing over and over. Because I love you. And I'm going to always be here for you. He promises to never, ever leave me nor forsake me. And he'll do the same thing for you. Why? Because he loves you and me. I heard a song in my closing, on the way here. And the song was, it's, it says forever by John, uh, Jason Nelson. It's called Forever. And if you've ever, if you ever get a chance, look at those words. Um, but I went to it, I was listening to it on the way here. And I said, Lord, I'm just trying to understand. What does forever mean? And some of the lyrics says, forever is a long time. It says, I'll be committed to you. I'll never leave you. Nothing in this world could make me walk away. Those are powerful words. He's saying, 
Nothing you do will make me walk away. But it is you who walks away. I'm still there. No matter what life brings, I'll be by your side. So no matter what you're going through, he says, I'm right here. Then it says, no matter what you face, guess what? You won't be lonely. Why? Why won't you be lonely? Because I'm there, right there with you. Forever is a long time. That's how long I'll love you. That's how long I'll love you forever. Who wouldn't want that kind of love? Well, there's a lot of people who don't want it. And it's because their heart cannot receive it yet. Some people don't want that kind of love. I feel sorry for them. I really do. And as I went along, it says, no matter what life may bring, I'll be by your side. No matter what you face, you won't be lonely. He repeats it. And he says, and this is my promise to you. My love is everlasting. Why? Because forever is a long time. And that's how long I love you. And with that, I just want to say thank you, God, for loving me forever. For loving me for a long time. Never, ever making me feel like I'm not wanted. He's never, ever made any of us feel like we're not wanted. He's never made us not feel as if we're not loved. We do it to ourselves. And with that being said, this is why I can say, I know that Jesus loves me. Thank you. Amen. Father God, we thank you once again for this evening. I ask God that whomever receives this word, Lord, my prayer is that they will know that you love them no matter what. And that it's never too late to turn around and come back to you. It's never too late to repent. It's never too late. Even when you fall down, you can get back up again, as the song says. And Jesus is right there, ready to receive you with open arms. Won't you give your hearts to him today and know that forever is a long time and that's how much he loves you and me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It was